All right, let's take a look at that. So that's that's another five minutes or so. And, and keep in mind, this is, was just a factory edge, just a garden variety factory edge. It was nothing, nothing any different than you're going to have on your axe. And ten minutes right there. And I'll tell you, this is what I it is exceedingly sharp. I mean, you just wouldn't need to get it any sharper than that. I mean, it's absolutely, it's got a nice polish on it, but we're not going to stop there. I mean, if we're going to do it, we might as well do it right, right? So now we're going to go over to our super fine. Super fine, the same process. Now, I'm not going to flip it back over and start with the side that I, go back to the side that I started with. No need to. The super fines is not going to take that much material off. We'll polish this side here, and then we'll go back and flip it. That way we only have to flip the axe just three times. Same goes here. Same thing. Light pressure. This is not a removing a ton of material. This is a polishing stone. And this is this will actually put a mirror finish on a piece of steel. An absolute beautiful mirror-like polish. How much time are we going to spend on this? Well, that's up to you. You know, whatever you want to do. I like to work it back a little bit, but uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, two minutes, two or three minutes on each side should should suffice. Suffice. I can feel that stone loading up right there, and it'll do that at first because there's some of that rough material. I'll just take it and give it a give it a little uh, dip there in the diesel or kerosene, and it's all good to go again. I really like these little stones. So I was going to share a story with you guys while we were doing this, past the time here. I talked about earlier about going uh, hunting with my grandfather. Man, I remember I used to uh, spend a lot of time with him after school. We lived close by and used to wait for him to come home. But he would take off, uh, he would take all, he had three weeks of vacation a year. He was a, a mechanic for Ford. He was, when he retired, he was a transmission mechanic. He had three, three or four weeks vacation off, and he took all of it, most all of it, for, for hunting. We'd go two weeks elk hunting and a deer and a week deer hunting. And uh, back then, I, don't, I guess it's probably still the same today, you couldn't, hunt, you couldn't carry a gun until you were 12. When you were 12, you could go through the hunter safety course, and then you could start carrying a gun. But, uh, man, I wanted to go so bad with him when I was little, you know, 10, 11, just couldn't hardly stand it. And I remember I must have been about, I was probably about Jack's age, 10 or so. My parents finally let me go. I couldn't hunt with him, but I could, I could go and walk around with him. And, man, I was so excited. So where we would go elk hunting would be up in the Hell's Canyon area, up in the northeastern corner of the state where Idaho, Oregon, and Washington all come together. Rugged country up there. Actually, Hell's Canyon up there is deeper than the Grand Canyon. Most people don't know that. We'd hunt there. but So it's cold up there. You hunt usually at the end of October is elk hunting season. And so my parents got me all, we, you know, we we're kind of a skiing family, got me all suited up in the latest, greatest ski gear because, you know, that's what you wear hunting, right? That's what you wear when it's cold. So <laughs> nylon pant bibs and I think I have moon boots and all that stuff. Well, we got to where we were hunting, and my granddad was, was a real hunter. He was not the type that would drive around in the car. He'd get out and stalk and hunt you know, properly, spend all day walking. And so there I was, following him around with those nylon ski pants on. And you've ever walked with those things. It's kind of like walking with corduroys. You know, they voom, 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 every, between you, as your inside of your legs rub back together. There wasn't an animal within a quarter mile of anywhere we went, because there I was walking around my poor granddad that, Take, took his whole, looked forward to this more than anything all year long and spoiled the whole, <laughs> spoiled the whole hunt. And he never said a thing. Bless him. He never, never said a word, never anything to make me feel uncomfortable. He just, we just went out day after day. And I was oblivious to it until, until uh, later. Uh, so, we, of course, we didn't, I don't think we got anything that year. Uh, but next year, I went with him again and Granddad took it upon himself to make sure that I was properly outfitted for, uh, for, for hunting. <laughs> so, so he personally saw to it that there were no moon boots. We went down, I remember we went down to the department store and got, got my first pair of, you know, proper boots, lace up, eight inch boots. I still remember them with it today. 
and uh, took them home and got them greased up. And then we would go buy, I mean, back then you didn't have all this fancy hunting clothes and hunting specific clothes. And or maybe you did, but we were not people that would afford, you know, that would, he wasn't, wasn't a man that would have bought something like that or could have afforded those, those things. So we'd go to the thrift store. There was a thrift store just down from his house called Red, White, and Blue. And we'd go in there and go through the racks and he'd always look for, we said we had to look for things that were either wool or gabardine. He always used to say gabardine. I don't know what gabardine even is. Gabardine or wool or ripcord. He was looking for uh, anything that was 100% wool or, or natural fibers because um, they're quiet. When you're hunting in the woods, you're, th those natural fibers are quiet. They're the best thing to wear when you're hunting and they keep you warm, whether it's wet or, or uh, cold or anything. So... That was, uh, but again, just to testify, uh, he, he was such a patient and a kind man, and, you know, he could have could have got, uh, put myself in that situation, I probably would have got frustrated and made comment or something, or said something that would have made, you know, made me feel bad or uncomfortable as, a, as when I was just little, but he didn't, never did, never said a thing, he just uh, said, well, he's not, I guess, figured there wasn't much he could do about it, and, and that it would be different next year, and, uh. I always admired that about him. That's looking really nice. We got a nice, really nice polish on that. Just working that out a little bit more. Boy, that is nice. Be careful, David. You don't cut yourself on this thing. Careful, I don't cut myself on it. Now, if you want to really get crazy and take it to the next level, you can strop it with leather. I've got a just a piece of pine here with a piece of rawhide rough side out leather. It's glued on there with contact cement and jeweler's rouge. Jeweler's rouge is just a kind of a, a stick. You can buy it just about anywhere. Um, and it's a, it's a very fine, it's kind of like a toothpaste, very fine compound, super fine compound. And what we're going to do is get on here, careful because this is sharp. We're going to strop this. I'm not going to be too much concerned about rolling it around too much. I'm going to go on the leading edge. That's, you know, that's where I'm really going to need my cutting power. And I want to push on that as hard as I can. So we'll do 50, each, 50 strokes each side. And I am alternating it here a little bit. I know anyone can cut paper, but you can see here. I can shave the back of my hand with it there. Let's take a look at it close up. All right, up close and personal here, we can kind of see what's going on because the electron microscope doesn't lie. All right, so you'll see there before in the States, all of these, changing soon. I think it's striations uh, there. Right, right here Remember how those, good they were edge. all the way down the to the edge there. And now you, you can, can see where that polished edge is, but it's far from perfect. Really look at this one right here. This is a very finely polished blade that's been used and retired and needs sharpening again. But you can see the smoothness and the polish on it there. Very fine polish. And this will, that will come on your axe. But there's no reason to get excited and try to do it all at one time. Because this is a shaving sharp edge. And even though it's not perfect, you can see there, it's a little bit of a wire on there. A little bit. Some of that will come off when, you, when it bites into the wood. But the main thing I want to show you is that these grains here, those long grooves, those no longer are in this, down in this, in the steel on the edge there, and that's starting to polish. And the more we do it, if you take a look at my Grand Forks Brook Small Forest Axe, that is a mere finish on it from just from the years and years of doing it. But that's kind of a interesting, interesting thing to see there. I think it's a kind of a cool, good way to compare it. Compare it there. You can really see that wire there, can't you? Right there. Get my finger on there without cutting it. But it's very, very fine. That there is a good edge on an axe. So that's really all there is to it. It's uh, nothing to be intimidated by. It's nothing you can't do yourself and you can get an edge on there that you're, you're proud of. It's rare to come across an axe that's actually sharp. Um, well, that's pretty, as you can see it from here, it just has just a beautiful polish. I can just see my, see my reflection in it. 
That's nice. All right. Well, hang on. Hang in there, David. It's almost done. There's one thing left to do, and that's we'll give the the sheath uh, the treatment. And that's not going to be a super long video, but I think we can talk about it and uh, maybe maybe an opportunity for another another story on there. We can have some story time while we're restoring the sheath. Um, so several of you asked if I was going to put my maker's mark on this uh, when I sent it to David, and and I'm not going to. And I don't put my maker's mark uh, on things that I, I haven't at least made a, a portion of it. I haven't made anything here. I haven't made the handle. I've simply just stripped the varnish of it off and I've sharpened up the head and I'll treat the sheath, but there's none, none of one of those things I've made. If I had made the handle, it'd be different, but I'm not going to do that and I don't do that uh, because, uh, because it's, not my, it's not my tool to put a mark on. So that's it. We'll see you over on the next part and thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to uh, purchase some of the materials that I've used in this uh, video, uh, you can go over to wranglermart.com I'll put that link down in the subject heading or in the cards and you can go over there and, and I'll sh I share some of the things that I like to use uh, over there. So put them there for your convenience and it's a way for you to support the channel. So I appreciate that. And we'll see you guys on the next video. <laughs> I'm the special guest. <laughs> Sweet potato. You're not going to want to miss this video over on Fresh Peas channel. Um, we After Costco, we headed over and she showed me how to make uh, three or four of the recipes. Um, and she custom tailored their, these to me and she's even given them all a name. Quiet Woods and <laughs> Lumberjack Smoothie or whatever they were. But I'm sitting here with my fresh or with my green tea. Uh, this is my uh, day number one. We're starting the 21 day raw vegan cleanse. And I have to say, it's not too bad. I am going to miss my coffee, but I'm not going to miss the addiction and the expense of it. So uh, I invite you to uh, click on here. I'll put the video link in the subject heading. We had a lot of fun. I think you'll enjoy the video. Um, well, last time I was in her kitchen, I know we had a good time making pizza. I think this was even better. So head on over there and, and make sure you subscribe uh, to follow our, our progress. And man, I can't believe how many people have contacted us uh, uh, about doing this. Um, I spoke with Corinne yesterday and she said well over 100. So nice to have that accountability. We're going to do it together. So we're trying to figure out a way that we can bring everyone in together, that we can uh, kind of check on each other's progress, whether it be weighing in or whatever it is. But uh, don't know if that's going to happen, but something we're looking at. Definitely open for suggestions. But click on this and head on over and tell Corinne I said hi. And we'll see you guys on the next video.